Labour aren't helping, are they? I mean, Labour's Brexit policies are so vague and so general because they're just trying to be everything to everybody. When I hear Labour talk about Brexit, it's sort of like astrology or something. <laughs> I always think astrology would be better if it was incredibly specific. Aries, stop looking for your sibling, Graham. She's dead. <laughs> Joining us to discuss Brexit, please welcome journalist and economist Grace Blakely. <laughs> Grace, what's going on with Brexit? Because you're, you're um, I should explain, you're, you're pro-Brexit but from a left-wing point of view. Yeah, which is not something that you hear often. Um... Do you feel any hope at all? I mean, to, to be clear, I don't think that the government in any way has done anything uh, that is good throughout the course of this process. We're really being run by a kind of a quite extraordinary group of people at the moment, and it's quite hard to see how to negotiate with them. We've seen that there's basically no way out. We're not going to get a no deal. We're probably not going to get a deal. And we're probably not going to stay in either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I think it's important to recognise that these people are angry without ever legitimising what they're angry about or the way that they're, they're doing it. You shouldn't be angry at immigrants. That's it, it, completely irrational to be angry at people who are just as powerless as you. You should be angry at the people that are actually responsible for this, which is the bankers, the, um, the you know, chief executives and all the politicians that are supporting them. But to be honest, no one seems to be saying that and Labour doesn't seem to be saying that either. Do you know what I mean? So they're kind of like against free movement. I mean, I know that they haven't necessarily done a good job, but from my reading, they're trying to actually build a consensus that the real divide in the UK isn't between the 48% and the 52%, it's between the 99% mm. and the 1%, and building that coalition that actually says we need a new government to be able to manage this process. Yeah, it's really strange, because like, it feels like it's, it's just drifting rightwards, this argument. Like, years ago, people would be like, oh, I'm not racist, but I find it sometimes when the call centres for me, I can't understand what they're saying, which is like, oh, I can see that. And now it's like, I'm not racist, but I just batter Polish people on the weekend. <laughs> like, well, that sounds legit. <laughs> and it's really hard, because, like, where I'm from in, in North Wales is really rural, it's very, very white, and, like, it, I, trying to explain it to my parents as well, who don't see any representation unless it's what they see on the television and they think they're right to be scared. And I remember um, at the end of our drive, a bungalow came up for sale and my mum was really scared that, that Muslims would move in because she'd heard about them on the news and she's like, I don't know what to do. What, what if people live there? And we're like, what if Muslims move there? I was like, it will be fine. And then some Scousers moved in. <laughs> and, and they kept their Christmas lights up all year and she was fuming about that. And I was like, well, if Muslims lived there... <laughs> an issue, would it? <laughs> so, that's Brexit. Thanks to Grace. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Grace. Thanks, Grace. Yeah.